feast of your ascension. We raise our pure hands to you in prayer, our chaste souls to you filled with grace, and our sincere hearts to you with love. We yearn for that place to which you have ascended, so that with the host of angels we may glorify and thank you your Father and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the one who came into the world from the Father. He was hanged on the cross, buried in the tomb, and raised up from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast, and all the days of our lives now and forever. Amen. O Christ, by your ascension you ended your stay upon the earth. You completed your plan of salvation, and you return to the Father to prepare a place for us, so that we may be where you are. You taught us the way to the place where you are going, and you told us to follow you. 
When Thomas asked you, we do not know where you are going, how can we know the way? You answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to walk with us on the way that leads to the Father. Turn our eyes toward him, strengthen our desire to be with him, and guide our steps that we may reach the Father through you and with you. We praise you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Christ our Lord, accept the fragrance of this incense that we have offered to you on the feast of your ascension into heaven. Grant that we may prepare ourselves to receive the Holy Spirit, whom you promised to send to us. May we take the places that you have prepared for us in the presence of the Father, and meet you in the heavenly kingdom. We may praise you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
praying, O to Lord, sanctify our minds and purify our consciences, that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. Lord of hosts, he is God strong and mighty, King of glory, Lord of hosts. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Therefore, I too, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Praise be to God always. goes up with shouts of joy, the Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and be 
and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. And Jesus said, now is, the, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. And if God is glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I shall not be with you only a little. I shall be with you only a little while longer. You shall look for me, but as I have told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. And so now I say this to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, so that you also should love one another. This is how all shall know that you are my disciples, if you have this love for one another. This is the truth, peace be with you. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Masmuro. This is a word that's not in your book. We have them in the Fenkitha, but as we told you, we will return now to continue to see deeper as to what these parts of the liturgy are. So just for the moment, remember Masmuro. But of course, this gospel, and as we, those who have been here for the years know that what I do is year after year, my teachings will be based on either the epistles or the gospel. So the first year I was here, what you find in your bulletin is always the gospel being printed. And I will tend to try to give a, uh, an explanation, a homily, properly speaking, of an exegesis of the scriptures, of the gospel in this case or use it certainly in an interrelation connecting it with some doctrinal aspect that we'll see. And so being now that I begin the fifth year that I've been here, we're back to the Gospels once again. We've done Gospel, Epistle, Gospel, Epistle, and now we do the Gospels again. But now to give you another understanding, I give you, you'll see it in the bulletins, it is the translation made from the Peshitto, as the Epistle has been this whole past year, but from a different translation. And this translation was published in 2001, but it's a translation from 1880s. So don't be super surprised when you see lots of yees and yous and these and thous. This chapter 13 of St. John is the very beginning of St. John's portrayal, recording of our Lord's teachings during the Last Supper. And as we've mentioned to you before, in the Synoptic Gospels, you have all the description of it. They come together, they pray, our Lord takes bread, this is my body, takes the chalice, this is my blood. They give the essential recounting of the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood. What St. John does decades later is he does everything but that. Because, of course, for him, you've already had it heard to you, recounted to you, you already believe this, you know this. What I want to give you is what he actually told us around that. So chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16, these chapters, there's nothing in it. He, there's no point when he picks up bread and says, this is my body. And St. John is not saying it didn't happen. St. John is just saying these are the teachings that surround it. And someday when we're really into this, 
I will break down this gospel, this recounting of St. John, because you can, by what is being said and what is described, you can, with great likelihood, insert the aspects of the blessing of which cup at which point during the Passover supper, which gives more meaning then to this, what looks like just a continual nonstop talking. So this is chapter 13, and it begins famously with our Lord washing the feet. Again, only St. John gives us this episode. And it seems likely that what this is, is a response to the jostling and the angry kind of, you know, miffed questions of the apostles of who's greater in the kingdom? Who is number one? Who's your favorite Lord? I've been here from day one. No, oh, but I've been here. He takes me. And, uh. So our Lord, we, there's no introduction. It just tells you that at the supper, he just gets up, girds himself with an apron, and starts washing feet like the slaves do. And so it's an answer to something, but it's the beginning of the Passover supper. And the reason why I give it to you is because the gospel that you have today with verse 31 is our Lord speaking, now is the Son of Man glorified. Well, what is it to glorify something? And in Latin, it's just gloriam facere, glorify. Facere is to do, to accomplish something. Glory is the idea of exalting, extolling something for the recognition of its worthiness, its goodness, its perfection. So glorification literally means to accomplish the act of recognizing this excellence, to glorify. But what he says this in response to is not a question that's been asked, but to the betrayal of Judas. The first part of this verse 31 is we are told, and when he left, when he had gone, because verse 30 is our Lord looking at Judas and saying, what you do, do it quickly. And then you have one of the most magnificent lines in the gospel. And St. John, after recounting that, says, and it was night. Which of course is referring just as much more so to Judas than it is to the time of the Last Supper. And then our Lord at table just simply says to them, now, now the Son of Man is to be glorified, and God will glorify him, and if God glorifies him, God will glorify himself within him and will glorify him within himself. This Trinitarian interaction that takes place. But what is this glorification? Death, betrayal, arrest, and this passion. And then on the third day to be raised. This is a lesson for all the apostles. Your path of glorification, your desire to go to heaven is dependent upon this exact same path, death and resurrection. So this is the meaning. There's only four lines that we have quoted today. But this is the essential meaning behind it. And then our Lord immediately connects it with them. That I'm giving you a new directive, a new commandment. Now what is interesting is people will quote the Old Testament and they'll say, oh, this idea of love of neighbor is already in the Old Testament. It is not. It is a bad translation of the book of Deuteronomy where it says, you will love your reyacha as yourself. But this is what's notorious about this rabbi, is he quotes Deuteronomy, but does to it only what God can do, because it's his book, is he twists it. He changes the sentence. And then it becomes word neighbor. But in Deuteronomy, it's reyacha. Reyacha is not your neighbor, it's your kinsman, the one who is related to you. That's the one you have to make your effort. Not just your brother and your sister, siblings of the same parents, 
but your cousins, and that second cousin once removed, and that one cousin three times removed, and that one cousin that you actually never met in your life, but you heard about she was living up north, those you have to treat like yourself. So it's already an expansion in Deuteronomy, but that is not the love of neighbor. And that's why our Lord says in this text, I give you a new directive. That's why we know it's not in the Old Testament. And to say that it is, you have all this anxiety, anxiousness in ecumenical dialogue to say, oh, well, you know, the Jews teach the same thing and the Muslims teach the same too. Oh, the Quran is filled with mercy and love. And nowhere in the Quran does it say that God loves you. God gives you life. You must submit yourself to Allah. But the notion of love, that I make an act of the will in recognizing good and to benevolently wish benevolence, wish well for this individual and to the degree that I can beneficently do good for this person, that is not anywhere in the scriptures other than in the gospels. That is the beginning, which is why he calls it a new commandment. And yet notice what the new commandment not. It's not that you have to walk around just feeling so wonderful about everybody. It has nothing to do with feelings. They are an effect, they may be there. And all of you who are married know that your marriage is not sustained by a hormonal flow and by emotions. Those individuals who try to do that, they make it maybe five years. You can put up with it. It's, but the individual understands this is a partnership for better, for worse, until death do us part. And you make that act of will. That is love. It's an act of the will, not an emotional experience. Emotions are around it. The same way when you eat a table, it tastes good. And if you have good company, it's even better because you have nice conversation too. It's all wonderful. But the primary choice you have to make is I have to like spend hours putting this all together and then we have to eat and then we have to clean up. We have to do all these things. This is why there's a sense and feeling of emotion around it. Because we all know, I know, I'm lazy. And if I didn't get that little oomph, of feeling nice about something. You can say all the same things also about sexual relations. That little, these oomphs are there because God knows you're not gonna do it otherwise. You spend hours, what, to masticate dead veget organic matter and swallow it. I mean, I knew a gentleman, his family was in a terrible car accident, train. The car had stalled on the tracks for whatever reason. Well, there are reasons for it, but that's a different thing. But this family was driving their children, and this, t this train just plowed right into the side of the car. The children in the back seat were fine, but both parents were severely wounded, injured by this train. And I give it to you because the father of the family, after months getting out of the hospital, he was telling me how hard it was to eat. And you're like, well... Gosh, if only if it weren't difficult for me to eat, I wouldn't have to worry about this extra 25 pounds. He's saying, no, what he's saying is that what he was saying is that I have no sense of taste after the accident. And he said the experience of eating, the mastication, the salivation, the experience, the feeling, the physical feeling of eating with no sense of taste is repulsive. I have to make a sheer act of will to eat lunch or to eat dinner. But there is nothing in it. It's pure act of will. So when our Lord says that I give you a new commandment, notice what he says, that you will love one another as I have loved you. You will love one another by that act of will in death and resurrection. Now is the Son of Man glorified. So this is a very great lesson for us. Our Lord is not opposed to emotion and feelings. They're part of what he created in us. 
but they are not the weather vane by which we determine and direct our lives. And when we do so, it becomes the catastrophic mess, ultimately, of hatred that we live in culturally. Because we tried for the last 60 years as a culture to live by emotions, right? Waving our arms, we all feel good, this is great. I want to teach the world to sing, imagine. All of this idiocy that has nothing to do with Christianity. Now is the Son of Man glorified because I now go to death that brings life. And you, you will do the same things because you learn from me. And this is a great importance because then he says, and this is the proof of the argument that you are truly my disciples. This is how people recognize you because you embrace that act of will of beneficence and benevolence and you love one another as the Christ has loved us. It's very profound, four lines, it's only four lines, but it is the entire core and the center of the scriptures. So Masmuro, we finish with Masmuro because it's not difficult to explain. If you look in your red books and the missiles, the thing that we just sang, dee 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 dee. So when we sing it, it says at the top, it says Psalm of Reading. And you have this three line hymn. There is no psalm there. Masmuro means, in Aramaic, it means psalm. It's the word that we use for psalm, masmuro. The masmuro is part, it's in a connected with the Kaddishat. And if you remember from whatever, the month ago before we started doing the Sunday, the Kaddishat was this prayer to Christ, to God incarnated through the, the reality of Christ. Then the Masmuro continues after that. And if you recall, I said it was actually historically, believe me, that it was a time when the scriptures for the epistle were also carried in procession. This is now the word of God. The same way that to this day the Jews in the synagogue will bring out from behind the veils the scriptures. So the Kaddishat and the Masmuro, the psalm that we sing. So of course the original question is, is why do we call it a psalm when there ain't no psalm there. We have a hymn. And this is something that's unique to the Maronite church. Now for those of you who sing, you may know the singing antiphonally, where there's an antiphon, and then you sing a, you'll sing a line, a verse of a psalm, and then you sing the antiphon again. Then you sing the next line of the psalm, the next verse, and then you sing the antiphon again. So what the Maronites do is not antiphonal. They literally write verse by verse between the lines of the Psalms, simply a hymn. And you do it in this Psalm, and you do it in the next Psalm, so that you have not antiphon, it's not an antiphon that just keeps re repeating. It's not a refrain. It's a line of a hymn, and then a line of a Psalm, and then a line of a hymn, and a line of a Psalm, and a line of a hymn surrounding and encapsulating to extol and to glorify Masmuro, the psalm. But as you've realized by now in the Maronite church, the poetry is central to everything, even to the point that in the Masmuro, for the glorification of this word of God, the psalm itself eventually disappeared. And all you have is the lines of the verses that they kept, which is why it still says in your book, Psalm of the Reading, Masmuro we call it, but there's no psalm there. So that's your next step deeper into what the Maronite Corbono, the divine Eucharistic sacrifice is. So the Kaddishat and the Masmuro are the moment of glorifying by recognizing the Lord God specifically in the incarnate word, which prepares us then to hear the word of God, which is then proclaimed in the epistle and then proclaimed in the gospel. So let us each glorify God in our lives by listening to the new commandments, which is that we love one another 
as he has loved us, the key. And God help us. May he give us the strength to see clearly and to have the desire to persevere in that act of the will, to do what is good because it is good, not because of how it feels, because it is the path that our Lord laid out for us. And then this generation will know that we are truly the disciples because ultimately we reflect that divine love of sacrificial love of the act of the will, which is the essential glorification of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Abdom. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially for those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Alleluia. of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
Lord, on all hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, in the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly, it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices and with sweet melodies proclaiming.
Do this in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup. You remember my death until I come again. comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood, so make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, <coughs> O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Nite Mor Rojo Hayo Kodisho, Unachenna Lainu Arkurbono, O no. the body of Christ our God be for us a pledge of life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, 
Grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priest, the Chaste Deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, to the guardian and refuge of their lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. All the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. And rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with your doubtful O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed without, with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a Christian death that is faithful, pleasing to you. And join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will. That in all and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O 
Lord, our Lord, you sent your only son, you sent us your only son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy, that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to whom be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy life, and our souls Forgiveness of our sins 
again and again we thank you, O Lord, and grace glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. The lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness, as you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet? Make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. 
You are blessed and in your kingdom is holy and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the Holy Cross of your only Son. Glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.